um, and then she'll be almost four and we'll go back to the riding. So I start with limbering up the young horse the same way I did the others, only that I can do a little more with him. So he has some introductory work to work laterally, a little bit more solidified than the others that way. He also learns it quicker, so he's more willing to do it. It's just very natural feeling for him. So it all, it all helps him be flexible, uh, balanced, and understanding things. So you see those were some very nice concepts there. He's, he went from shoulder in. He did a little uh, leg yielding. Then a little uh, turn around me by opening up his hips. Uh, 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 uh. That was a fall in on the shoulder there. Yeah, like that. Open the hips. Good. Then we're going to turn the shoulders around. Keep the horse forward and straight. Walk up. Good. And then push him back into the rail and a leg yield. And then move that into a shoulder in. Good. Excellent. Open the hips this way. So he's opening them in both directions. Excellent. Then catch your shoulders. Move the shoulders over. So this is an excellent choice of exercises. We go from one exercise to the other to help the horse limber up, open his hips, open his chest. Very nice. Good boy. And you can see he does that with relative grace and ease even though we have bugs attacking us. <laughs> up, up, up. Come up, walk up, stay forward. There you go, very nice, excellent. So that may have looked very informal and very simple, uh, but that's a lot and does a lot to balancing a horse. You have to keep him forward and straight, and it teaches the horse later uh, to carry his haunch on his haunch and balance correctly by opening and widening the base from the hips and opening and widening the chest so that he has nice four pegs. Now I'm saying to him, we stretched out, we're going to go to work. I want you a little bit more forward, a little more awake. There I'm using a little bit of a strong bend on his shoulder and taking his rib cage and pushing it out. There we go. Two adjustments ago, he was very out in his rib cage. So, and this is deep sand, by the way, over here that he just tripped in, which is okay. He has, in this ring, our ground varies. It's excellent because we bring the horse in deeper ground and then in shallower ground, but it's all soft footing, so that the horse maintains what he does in nature which is move over terrain that is not always perfect. I don't like to baby my horses, but I don't like to stress them. So I don't work in the deep area consistently. I go back from the deep area to the shallow area. It works their tendons and their body differently to be in deep. And it's not always good to do too much but it is good to do some. The horse should be able to adjust his body in varying terrain. Whether he's going to be a dressage, a jumper, or an eventer, you get by the camera, buddy. <laughs> he needs to be able to adjust for the different terrains. If we put him in a perfect ring all the time, he never ever teaches his body to compensate for variations in footwork. Then the first time he hits a variation, by purpose or accident, the horse injures himself and becomes useless. We disable our horses by overprotecting them and making the world over perfect. There's a difference between him having to have really bad footing all the time and having a good mix-up of good footing, deep, shallow, and more compact, less compact, so the horse adjusts to that. I purposely have nicely kept fields so they don't accidentally have big holes to fall in. 
but I make sure they have uneven ground in places so they adjust. Excellent. That's very nice, Cash. So there he has a nice, nice balance. He's coming under himself with the right hind. He's flexing all the three joints of the, the haunch. He's bringing down his pelvis and rotating under. And he's carrying his front end. Good boy! Which is something that a young horse should learn right away as the correct way to trot. Very nice. Very nice. Horses with bigger strides like Cash, you have to make sure you're keeping them on the haunch like this. Very nice. Good boy. Excellent. And now we'll go the other way a bit. That was very nice work. Let's see how the other side feels. So he couldn't do that before his last adjustment. Good boy! As nicely. So his chiropractic adjustment, his magna wave, and his good limbering work have helped him recover from, I don't know, rolling and putting his rib cage out of place. This happens to us like it does to them. Sometimes a little extra help is good. Yeah, in the wild they don't have this, <laughs> but that's the nice part of being a modern medicine horse in captivity is that we can use all the things we need to help support the horse's body. You can see in this case he's stiffer today on this left rib cage. So I just moved into this corner. I'm walking into his rib cage. I'm shortening up the circle. I'm increasing my depth so that I walk more so he stays on a bigger circle, but I'm closer to him to hold the rib cage like this and bring the haunch under better like this. Excellent, excellent. Now you can't do that with a young horse that's not practiced and comfortable with where you are and trusting. Kayla's not ready for this. He is. Excellent. We didn't stay on that smaller circle too long. I let the youngster out of that. So what we wanted to do was show him to bend in the rib cage, come up in the haunch, balance better than he was, stretch himself out better and then release them into the bigger circle. I'm going to make the circle smaller again. Put a little more pressure to get this hind right. And the rib cage. And catch the shoulder. Push the hind. Catch the shoulder. Walk into the rib cage. Push the hind. Catch the shoulder. Walk into the rib cage. Like that. Get your timing. Get your rhythm. Balance the horse with rhythm. Excellent. Get your timing, push at the moment that's correct, half halt at the moment that's correct, to maintain the pace and the balance. Use the corner now. The whole corner will help us get this hind leg to do its job a bit better. You can see it's bothering him when I make him get on this hind a little more. He's throwing his head up there. That's okay. That's it. We want to make sure we teach the horse what this means and how we can help him when he's young before we're putting the weight of a rider on. So when we go to straighten out these issues, because he'll have him as a riding horse too, that we could use these skills. Excellent. So now I feel like, okay, I asked, I showed him what I wanted. He came along a little better, not quite right. So I'm going to move the shoulders from one side to the other. Sometimes that helps catch the hind leg where I want and unlock the shoulders and move the rib cage over. Excellent. I'm going to keep the horse moving forward in that transition of changing the direction like that. Move your whip first. Over. Tell the horse. Over. And your line catches the loose. Release your line so the horse goes out. Move your whip over, take the line in and say over. Excellent. Now these guys, as they build up strength and power, they'll do this quicker and quicker and they'll be able to do it at the canter. But for now he's young. We want to just make sure he stays forward. Excellent. And that we're not dragging him by the nose through this. So I'm going to settle him in the right here. I felt like he was losing his haunches there a bit. Excellent. Good. Like that. Like that. So he's got a nice shoulder in on this side. Good. Over. Now we're going to do it on the other side. 
Make sure he balances. Now I showed him at first to unlock the shoulder and the chest. He lost his balance in the haunches and the pelvis. So now we're going to say, I want these changes of direction, but I want you to hold together, eh? Like that. So he sat back on the hip there. So probably with the growth spurt he's in, that tendon on the stifle is being a bit tricky. Happens when they're growing, just like it does for us, eh? Like that, there. So that tendon popped a little. Then we caught the shoulder. We sent the hip. Excellent. Catch the shoulder. Send the hip. Excellent. Very nice. So now he's got a better bend. It's not perfect. Let's see if I can get a little shoulder in there. Let's see. Huh? Excellent. There you go. Bring in. Okay, like that. Push it out. Like that. Like that. There. Almost. Almost went into the shoulder and he wasn't quite there. Slow the shoulder. Push out the rib cage. Like that. Better. Nice. So he's coming to it. That's it. Slow the shoulder. Push the rib cage. That's it. That's it. Like that. So he got the impression of what we're doing. There, much better. So now we can see the abdominal muscles. When he went to that fence line, came up nicely. Excellent. You can see the horse now asking to walk. Because he feels it in his body, that adjustment we just made. It was subtle, but it balanced the horse. Walk out of it backwards. Stay forward. So just then as we balance the horse, they feel it. Being young, they want to maybe go out of it. And that's why they try to back up with the haunches to the outside of the circle. So you have to quick make the horse go forward and stay with the haunch under. Not necessarily trotting, but walking is good. Ah. That's it. Walk up. That's it. So he doesn't lose it. So he's trying to throw the haunch out, which is why it's nice to have these three sides to catch him with. That's it. And now we have to walk more. So we keep him on the rail in a bigger space. But control that hip. Like that. Like that. You're being busy with that leg. Bring it under, buddy. And walk. And the transitions help a lot. It's another way to shorten the base. Just to use the transition, eh? And get the horse coming closer from front to back. Underneath himself. Ah. Yes, and carrying the balance there, like that. See the up transition, how more, and it cut the horse from going out on the rail and throwing his hips out to the outside of the circle. It kept him under. Excellent. Excellent. And forward, like that. So much better. It's still being tricky, that tendon. That's okay, huh? We've got to just stretch it. Because when we're growing, we still have to stretch. We don't want to overwork it, though. Excellent. Walk up. No, no, that's... I know you want to keep cheating on this side. But we're just walking. Huh? Good boy. Huh? Yeah. So, given how he felt in that tendon, I'm not asking the canter work. Because he's in a growth spurt, that's affecting how he wants to sit and rotate the pelvis. And I'm going to take that into consideration that it would be an unsuccessful event to teach the horse to not engage correctly his hind leg for the canter to part. And as I don't want my workouts to emphasize poor departs, but rather I want it to emphasize good departs, I'm going to call this the end of the workout for today, where he ended on a good place, more under himself. Still not as under as I'd like with that right hind, head but left hind. Yeah, let's see if we can just a little bit tap it up, huh? Just a little bit tap it up, tap it up there, like that. Sometimes I can catch the horse up close like that, help him out a little bit more with a little bit more shoulder in work, like that, like that. At that, don't keep trying to throw the haunch out on me. Yeah, catch your shoulder. Yeah, see how that hind leg went back there? That's the problem, eh? So, see, I'm going to catch him. Yeah, how fast can I go? <laughs> so, that's all up up on my A's, eh? Good. Ah, ah. 
So he wants to barge a little bit here. He's busy looking at the things that could be interesting to spook. And I'm saying, nah, it's also important training for the young horse. We don't spook. Got that. Back up. Good. Got that. Hey. Keep your shoulder off of me. Huh? And sit on that haunch. So now I'm keeping him in the shoulder in. I'm going to rotate that pelvis a little bit strongly there. Just for a few strides. And then open the hips. And let him go out of it. That, 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 get off that shoulder. Get off that shoulder. So he's stuck on this left shoulder. So I'm going to use the rail to help do the rest. Huh? Like that. That's, move your shoulder over. Huh? So the horse wants to bury that shoulder into me. So I'm going to push his shoulder away. Like that. Keep him on the shoulder out. Excellent. 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 So that's an advanced move. I have a friend of mine whose young 10-year-old horse that she just purchased needs to see how to do that with her mare. That's an excellent exercise for a horse that's bargy on the shoulder once they have enough line work and ground work instilled. I see our camera left us. That's the way it goes. Every time I want to show something good, the camera leaves. <laughs> Let's catch the camera and see if we can show it. Good boy, Cash. All right, so again, we're going to repeat this exercise. Now going in the opposite direction. That's it. That's it. Let's see if the camera can follow us, Cash. Yeah, so it's good to do, even if the shoulder is stuck left. Yeah, over this way. So I'm telling the horse, look, I want you to go with your shoulders that way. Ah, now I can tap him forward, get him to go down the rail. Tap the neck, tap the neck. Send the horse out. So he's young. He hasn't done a lot of this. So they forget. And they don't really know what you want from their body. So you're showing them. Move your shoulders. Move your shoulders. Like that. Then you're going to move the hip under. Like that. Okay. Lots of ants on that rail. So we have to be aware of that. Lots of red ants over there. We have to get some powder there. Don't we? Alright. So we're going to. Move him going the other direction now. Hopefully stay away from all those ants there. Up. Walk up. Good. So now on this side, he's a lot more comfortable. He does it better. You can see he's more willing. This gives me the opportunity to get that left hind under. Pushing through to the right shoulder. That's ideally what I want in both directions. You can see he's doing one direction better than the other. Which is interesting. Good. Over. Nice. I'm moving the shoulders over. I'm going to ask him to go down the rail again. So he gets this side right. Excellent. So you see, by releasing the line a little sooner, he was better able to comply. There. That's it. Like that. I'm going to come off the rail a bit more just because the ants. I didn't want him that squirrely though. Hey, no eating and working. Excellent. Excellent. Like that. Now you see the horse is moving nicely sideways. And when they're really strong at doing that, you would go to the trot in that circle. At the end. And we lost the camera. Yet again. Oh well. That's enough for you today, my friend. Cash emotionally, mentally, and physically handles longer workouts. So... We don't mind that. We let him do it. And the flies are horrendous, aren't they, buddy? They sure are. Good boy. Excellent. Oh, yes. Doesn't matter we use the fly spray, huh? Oh. Those biting mosquitoes and flies are rampant out here today. So this tells you how little a young three-year-old can handle bits. Because they can't handle chewing a chopped up carrot. Because they're baby teeth. They're still baby teeth. Hey, don't bite my hand, dude. That was not nice. All right. I did that by accident, I know. But you got to be careful. All right. Hazards of hand-beating treats.